Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm AST and this is going to be a photography DIY video. I'm going to show you how I adjusted selfie ring light to fit around my reversed lens for macro photography. So if you're interested, keep on watching. When it comes to LED ring lights that fit around the lens of your camera, there are many, many options. However, there are not that many options when it comes to attaching a ring light to a reverse lens. And um, I do have another video where I'm showing you how you can use a store-bought LED ring light that you can put on your reverse camera lens for macro photography. But I also made a simpler version that was before I got my store-bought LED ring flash and lights. They're a two-in-one. So before I got one of them, I used this selfie ring light and I'm gonna show you the things that you need and how I did this DIY and then I'm gonna go over testing it and tell you what things is good for. The things that you're going to need are razor knife, lighter or even better a blowtorch. Of course you're going to need the selfie ring light. You're going to need a rear side lens cap to match your lens and super glue or hot glue gun. In my case, the rear end lens cap fits inside the LED ring light. What I needed to do is cut out the inner circle of the lens cap. Lens caps are usually made from hard plastic and this is why the knife has to be kept under a flame so it can get hot enough to melt the plastic. This is the most challenging part and you really must be very careful. The tip of my knife broke because the plastic is so hard. I had to stop recording multiple times because I wanted to concentrate and be safe. Eventually the inner circle just snapped. And then I cleaned it up a bit, made sure that there are no rough edges or anything sticking out. After this, all I had to do is add glue along the outer side and glue the lens cap to the ring light. And that was it. This is what it looks like and so the way I attach it is I just remove the rear cap on my lens and I just put it on and that's it. It's just as simple as that. Of course I turn it on and I choose the settings which is I always like cool light. You can't see it because it's daylight right now on the video. But yeah, it's just as simple as that. Now, if you're not comfortable with cutting things and making that hole over there, what you can do actually is one of those protective rings. They're called protective rings and they go um, on your reverse lens. You just, okay, where is this? You just mount it like that there. Supposed to protect it, and if you want to put a filter on your reverse lens, they are rings for that. So, what you do is you take one of those, you put it on, and then you repeat the same thing. And you just need to glue it like that, okay? Just the same way that I glued it. I mean, it doesn't fit in the inner circle, so you'll just have to do the best you can to make it as even as possible, but it doesn't really need to be perfect all you need is to make sure that it stays on. I am going to link that in my blog post if you want to know exactly what that uh, protective ring is. One of my test subjects was a coin. I have the ring light on my Canon EFS 18-55mm reverse lens and I have it set at 18mm. Now I will give it a try also at 55mm, which is going to be even easier 
and I'm going to get more light since I'm not as close to the subject as before. I'm pretty happy with the results. I will post the photos and the camera settings on my blog. The link is going to be in the description. I do want to say that it's not very powerful, it's only one pot. This is according to my calculations, based on the limited information provided on the packaging. This is another LED ring light where they didn't think that something like the actual power of the light is important enough to list in the description. I looked through and it really wasn't listed anywhere. Well, at least they were kind enough to provide enough information so that I can do the calculation. I was able to test it with a coin. I was also able to test it with um, um, other things around the house, like a doorknob. I did have to increase my ISO, but that really doesn't matter because newer cameras can handle quite high ISO. And since it's focus tracking, the overall quality of the image didn't suffer from anything. So it can work. Sometimes you may need higher ISO. Again, you can attach it like that to your first camera lens and that makes it convenient. I do want to say that this one worked out to be a lot cheaper, around $18 altogether, the two parts, and um, also it doesn't use any batteries. You might have noticed that the other LED ring lights to fit around the lens are not only not compatible with reverse lens from the box, but they are um, always with um, like a box that comes that attaches on your hot shoe and this is where the batteries are stored which can get a bit bulky well this one is charged with a usb cable and it is a lot lighter and more portable and um quite convenient to use in that sense so it is an option there if you don't want to buy something for 30 and over dollars it is option to use this one and it's <laughs> already adjusted for use with reverse camera lens. Now you can definitely attach this to the regular side of your lens by using a reverse ring and just gluing the reverse ring on it. But it really, it, it's not great for that. Again, it's not strong enough. So it, we won't be able to use it for anything that it's like more than 20 centimeters away. Those are the photos that I took. As you can see, it's not exactly very powerful for that. So that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do have other videos on photography DIYs, on photography in general, on macro photography. You can have a look at them. If you want, just browse through my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.